Hi, my name's Mary McIntyre. I'm an amateur astronomer and I also do astronomy sketching. This year at the Dark Skies Festival I was due to do a sketching workshop but obviously that's not been able to happen. So in this video I'm going to do a kind of short summary that will hopefully help you if you want to have a go at astronomy sketching um, before next year. What we're going to need first of all is a good photograph of the moon. Um, I work from photographs as a beginner because once you've got those skills you can then translate them to working at the eyepiece. What you want to look for is a photograph that has some really good kind of shadows and light regions in it. Usually when you get a crater like this it's not during a full moon because the moon's illuminated from above. So look for a photograph that has some good shadows and look at the fact that there's shadows on the crater floor and also outside of the crater. I like to work on black paper so I just use a sketching pad like this but any black paper or card will do and I like to work with pastel pencils so all we're using today are one black and one white pastel pencil and for blending I like to use cotton buds and cotton wool and you can reuse these um, you can kind of use the cotton bud to actually shade areas once it's got pastel on it so I will show you how to do that so I'm going to bring you down to see my hands and then we'll draw this and I'll voice over that part so I can explain what I'm doing and then we'll come together at the end and have a look at the final result. Start off by putting a thin layer of white pastel on the page and blending it well with cotton wool. Then mark out the outline of the crater, add the bright highlighted region on one side and then go in with your black pencil and mark out all the crater shadows on the floor of the crater. Fill that in and blend it with cotton wool and then do the same on the outside of the crater, making sure that all your shadows are pointing the same way and making sure that you've got the shape of the shadows accurate. Then just alternate between your white pencil and your black pencil and fill in the details around the outside of the crater, making sure that anything that is casting a shadow is doing so in the same direction as all your other shadows, because by doing that, that will add to the photorealism of the sketch. Just keep working your way out. You can do as much or as little as you want around the outside of the crater, but every little bit that you do around the outside of the crater will really help to sell the idea that this is a realistic sketch. So just work your way, all the black bits, all the white bits and all the bits that are shades of grey in between. For subtle shading you can actually use the pastel that is on your cotton bud and just kind of allude to little bits of shade differences on the crater floor or any areas around the crater. So just work your way out until you feel like you've got enough detail on there and just blend it all and then you'll be finished. So here's the final sketch. It won't be perfect and that's absolutely fine. This is just about practicing the skills and getting used to how to approach this process. Once you've done one crater, why not go out and find some photographs of other craters that look interesting to sketch. There are also lots of mountain ranges on the moon as well, which are also fun to sketch because they have those lovely mountain shadows. Once you've got the technique down, you can actually do this to draw the entire moon at once, not just a zoomed in area. And that's really good because you can kind of map the changing moon phases as the lunar cycle goes on. During a full moon, you don't get these harsh crater shadows, but you do get the benefit of seeing all the lunar seas and all the mountain regions. And you also see ejector rays from some of the larger craters that you don't see during other moon phases. So you do exactly the same thing, just kind of lay down a thin layer of um, white and blend that out well, and then just map out the dark areas and the light areas. And then you can go in and just kind of fine tune and add little details. I hope that video was helpful for you. Um, if you have a go at sketching something after watching this video, tag me on social media and let me see what you've been doing. I'll stick a few more sketches that I've done at the end of the video to give you an idea of the things that can be achieved with pastels. I hope um, that you do have a go at this and next year, hopefully, I'll see a lot of you in person and we can actually do a proper sketching workshop together. Good luck. Thank you.